Archaeologists are taking a renewed look at Lovelock Cave in northern Nevada. They are also re-examining some of the thousands of artifacts discovered in the cave during past excavations. Headline, April 3rd, 2024. UK Daily Mail, stunned archaeologists probe claims of giant skeletons in Nevada caves where they found a 15-inch sandal that had been worn down as well as massive handprints across the walls. According to the mail, some of the other objects recovered include baskets, duck calls, arrowheads, and ceremonial objects carved into shapes of animals. Continuing, the claims about these giants of Lovelock originated from Native Americans who told stories about a brutal tribe of pale-skinned, red-haired invaders who waged war on the local groups. Sarah Winnemucca Hopkins was one of the last full-blooded members of the Paiute tribe. She was the daughter of the famous Chief Winnemucca. Her people had lived in what is now northern Nevada for thousands of years. Winnemucca had befriended the Anglos. She taught herself English. Her book, an autobiography and historical account of her people was first published in 1883. The Cite Ka were outsiders who settled on their lands. In the book, she refers to the Cite Ka as, quote unquote, barbarians. The two groups often went to war. Daily Mail. According to Paiute legend, the tribes eventually banded together to fight the Cite Ka. They chased them into a cave, pelted them with arrows, and lit a fire at the mouth. This is the only known alleged photo that exists of a Cite Ka. Cite Ka, giants, legend or fact? Miners in the 1880s found two mummies in the Lockwood Cave. They were said to be a male and a female, one six foot tall, the other six and a half feet tall. That description is remarkably similar to the Tehelches tribe in southern Patagonia. They numbered about 500 tribal members in the 1800s. It is well documented that they were unusually tall, six to six and a half feet. Given the diminutive stature of the Paiutes, it is easy to see how such legends of giants might have emerged. Did the Cite Ka have reddish hair and pale skin? From thisweekinlibraries.org, red hair is not commonly associated with Native American communities, but there are genetic factors that contribute to the prevalence of this trait among certain tribes. Continuing, the MC1R gene provides instructions for making a protein called melanocortin-1 receptor. This receptor plays an important role in normal pigmentation. Continuing, melanocytes are specialized cells that produce a pigment called melanin. That gives skin, hair, and eyes their color. Certain genetic variations are most common in people with red hair, fair skin, and freckles. Thisweekinlibraries.org This genetic factor has been linked to the Celtic and Viking ancestry of some Native American groups, leading to the expression of red hair within these communities. West Eurasian genetic link to ancient Siberians. A paper was released in 2011. 
ancient links between Siberians and Native Americans. The authors identified specific haplotypes linking Western Eurasians with ancient Siberians. Intro West Eurasian mtDNA haplogroups found in gene pools of South Siberians demonstrate an obvious link between populations of Siberia and those of West Asia, the Caucasus, and Eastern Europe. Key finding R1A-M420 and R1B-M343 with distinctive Eurasian distribution. R1A-M420 is most frequently observed in Eastern Europe and Altai region of Siberia. Paiute people today. OregonHistory.org, an 1872 executive order by Republican President Ulysses S. Grant established the nearly 1.8 million acre reservation as a home for all roving and straggling bands in eastern and southeastern Oregon. Today, the Paiutes own multiple reservations throughout Nevada, Utah, and southern Oregon. From the National Park Service, the tribal bands pursue various economic development projects to ensure sustainability and cultural preservation for future generations. They also continue to celebrate through dancing and games at annual tribal gatherings. Their lands were granted to them largely as a result of the lobbying efforts of Sarah Winnemucca. Before her death in 1891, she traveled to Washington, D.C. and met with the president to secure the rights of her people. A life-size bronze statue of Sarah Winnemucca now sits in the halls of Congress. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and please pass this video on to others. And a special hat tip to a subscriber to the channel for bringing this to our attention and suggesting we do a video on this topic. Of course, we welcome any and all suggestions. Thank you. See you next time.